So you say you want to change your spark plugs in the uh, seventh generation 3.5 liter Maxima. I have an SV version, 2011. But um, so I'm going to change the spark plugs. I got some uh, Iridium spark plugs here. And they're Dentos. Uh, they're super, super plugs is what they're advertised as. $15 plug, um, pre-gapped, no anti-seize, quarter turn to half turn to put those in once they're finger tight. And then uh, some of the things that might help you along the way is to go ahead and get a, a PCV valve with the hose. Since you're gonna have the air plenum off, you might as well change that out and if you plan on uh, disconnecting the throttle body i got a new gasket for the throttle body usually the ones you see on youtube nobody changes that throttle body gasket out but um, i plan on changing that out um, and you also want to get you a the air plenum gasket and there's a couple other gaskets in there too but I'm just going to use the air plenum for the upper air intake and then uh, you want to get you I'm going to replace all six of my coils just because they're so hard to get to in the back I, I assume you could probably keep using them there I've inspected these uh, Hitachi coils and they're pretty uh, sturdy items and so I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, the dielectric grease already in the boot, and um, so that way they'll be ready to go. And a 14 millimeter thin wall um, with magnet uh, socket, and that socket, uh, from what I've watched on YouTube, is going to help with. Um, the tight space that you have to get to. And so, as you can see, it's got a magnet inside there to help you, help you guide those in. So, 14 millimeter thin wall socket. I got it off Amazon. And these are the Denso's FXE22HR. pre-grease my um, my uh, ignition coils and so you just get a little dab and just kind of get it inside the boot there just help um, get on the uh, spark plug a little better and then I put a little bit around this uh, gasket up at the top here and hopefully I never have to remove them again but if I need to they'll be easier to pull out with just a little bit of grease on there And you can also put a little on the ignition or uh, where the connector uh, connector goes. Just don't hit them wires. If you do, it's not that big a deal, but that'll just help uh, grease up and get your connection on a little better right there. A little bulb grease. So I guess you want to have a game plan when you start on this. Uh, most of the videos you see on YouTube show people working from the uh, right to the left or left to the right. And that's what I plan on doing uh, because you want to kind of get that uh, upper air intake um, loose. That way you can get to, there's a bolt that's hold, uh, there's a bracket uh, that's, there's a bolt back here that's um, pretty hard to get to. So once you kind of get the upper air intake a little bit loose, it's a little, maybe give some give to uh, take that bolt out. Then you got a couple of hoses back there too, the PCV valve and maybe the, for the brake booster. 
But um, I'm gonna start off by removing the uh, the dust cover, and it's just a five mil uh, hex head or Allen wrench um, to get those off. So we'll start there. All right, so we got those first couple screws out. And then it's just pushed on with a couple of bushings right here. All right, so move this out of the way and put your screws with it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these first ignition coils out and change these first three spark plugs right here just because they're easy to get to and just because I want to have a halfway victory before I start taking all the rest of this stuff off. So I'm going to go ahead and take these three plugs uh, out and change them and change the coils. And that's uh, all three of these are held with a 10 millimeter socket. So you get your socket ratchet. You'll see that once you get it busted, you can probably just uh, take them off with your fingers because once they're on there, they'll come out pretty easy with a 10 millimeter. Remove that and then remove your connectors. So you can remove, once you bust them off, you can get these off with... Uh, just uh, one with your fingers, 10 millimeter, three of them. And then you squeeze the uh, connector and just kind of wiggle it a little bit to get it to come off. And what the videos on YouTube show you to kind of jiggle your ignition coil. And then this one came out pretty easy. So someone lubed this up pretty good. So there's your first ignition coil out. Now let's get uh, the rest of the ignition coils out. And then the spark plug. Okay, so all three ignition coils are out. One, two, three. So next is to remove this spark plug in each one of those chambers. So you'll want to use a long extension with your 14 millimeter thin wall to get down in there. Hundred thirty three miles, a hundred three thirty thousand. These are the original plugs that were when we first bought this car. To look all right. And so you do the rest, the other two. Okay, time to drop the new spark plugs in. So I'm gonna put it in my magnetic 14 thin wall. And if you notice, it's got a lot of thread, so it's gonna take a little bit to get all the way down to the bottom, but you just wanna do this by hand until it starts to get tight. All right, so that's in there uh, hand tight and just a little turn with the wrist ratchet. Now I'm going to uh, just turn it, give it a quarter turn to a half turn. So that was probably a half turn, two quarter turns in there. And that's as far as I'm gonna go with that. Now I'm gonna do the others. So once you've guided it in there, got it hand tight, I'll start at this point here at the 12 o'clock.
so it's a little less than a half a turn. Try to get two quarter turns, but didn't want to force anything past that. Now it's uh, time to put in our new Hitachi uh, pre-greased or uh, dielectric greased around the fittings and time to put those in. All right, feels nice and snug. All right, we're gonna put the middle one in. It's pre-greased already around the fitting here that we did earlier. So you can go at a different angle, but you're gonna get right on top of that spark plug. It's, you'll feel sometimes a pop, but uh, if not, you'll go until until it lines up with your uh, where your bolt goes. All right, and the third ignition coil will go in. And then you can kind of wiggle it around to get some more of that grease around there, but we greased it pretty good, so you shouldn't have any problems. Then hook your connectors back onto the ignition coil. You'll hear it click. All right, and then you put your 10 millimeter bolts back in. And just take them finger tight and then just, you know, probably give it another quarter turn once you get it on there. But uh, even finger tight is going to be just about fine depending on how strong your fingers are. So all three connectors are, are on. And now I'm just going to tighten up the bolts here with my wrist, wrist bracket. So now your three uh, front plugs are done. New ignition coils, new spark plugs. Now it's time to get the ones in the back. So we'll have to game plan that for the ones in the back. So we're going to start over on this side and work our way here. And part of my uh, spark plug change, you can probably omit, because I'm going to take out my mass airflow sensor. We have, you'll have to disconnect it anyway when you're trying to get to this throttle body to take the throttle body off of the uh, air intake. So throttle body, mass airflow sensor, and I'm probably going to take out my air filter, change it, and clean out this box in here. So I may even disconnect the battery here. But then, uh, if you see all these markings, uh, this is where the plan that I was going to uh, uh, remove and mark so I would know which way. But I'm going to probably take off the least amount of hoses possible. And that'll start from here, here. So part of this you can go ahead and omit because I'm going to disconnect this uh, mass airflow sensor here. I've already disconnected my battery and uh, I'm going to take that harness off the mass airflow sensor just because I'm going to clean it and probably clean out this air box right here before I get to the throttle body and start taking off these other tubes. So you got two bolts holding that mass airflow sensor in and it's a 9 30 seconds. Or you could use a Phillips head, but that one in the back's a little hard to get to. Press that clip to get it out. And then you can get to that bolt back here with your 9 30 seconds. And you get that second screw out, and then you can pull this mass airflow sensor out and then clean it.
you can clean those inner wires in there. Just use a mass airflow sensor cleaner. And then you can let it dry out. And only use a mass airflow sensor cleaner when you're spraying the inners of the wires there. So you got that little box there. And then that, those wires in there, don't touch them, but just spray it and then let it dry out. And you can reinstall it once you're about ready to start the car. Of course, once you've sprayed it out, you want to set it somewhere where it won't collect dust and it can dry out. So I'm just going to put it right there. And you got the two screws right there. And you can use a pair of pliers just to pull this back out from behind. Just kind of put that over. Okay, YouTube does, I haven't taken off any hoses or any part of the intake. Uh, just happened to see this hose not connected any to anything. It looks like it goes behind the air box, but I don't see where it would be connected to anywhere. Um, but it's this one right here, but it's not connected to anything. So if someone could tell me where, the, if that's supposed to be connected to something. So I guess I will take off this part of the air intake here. It looks like uh, three 10 millimeters there, there, and there. And that way I can kind of look down underneath there and see what hoses might be lurking about. So I went ahead and took out the uh, three bolts here. One to 10 millimeter, all three. Once you take all three of those out, you can just kind of push in and pull it out. Set that aside. Okay, so there's the air box there. And so that's the tube that's not connected to anything and doesn't look like it needs to be. So it might just, maybe that's that natural aspiration part of it. It's not even plugged up. It's just a, a hose that's not connected to anything. So my next move is to uh, undo the air box here. Probably take out the filter. I want to clean inside there a little bit and also to take out this one right here probably with my mm, five thirty seconds nine thirty seconds and take that out and leave this connected and pull this over that way i don't have to disconnect here So you got a clip here, here, and then there's one underneath. And if you kind of lift up this boot, you can kind of get to see it where it's clamped at the bottom there. So uh, probably pull this purge line here. If you can see, there's one more boot underneath here. Kind of got to lift this up to see it. It's right there.
So it looks like that is just vented out towards the firewall. It wasn't connected to anything. So inspect the boot. Make sure you don't see any cracks in the boot. Some buckets, all right. And retighten all your clamps once you get it back in there. So this connects to the throttle body. This funnels through that way and just vents out towards the firewall. And your purge there and to your air box here. So now you have your two coolant lines that I'm just going to leave connected. And then you have the access to the five hex Allen bolts right there. So I'm going to take those off and probably clean out that throttle body with the toothbrush and air intake cleaner. Um, so four bolts. That's a uh, five hex Allen wrench. And beware of that bracket on the uh, lower right um, throttle body bolt. It has a bracket with some wiring on it, so that'll have to be connected correctly. So the throttle body uh, has the four bolts here, five hex head, and uh, they were easy to break. Uh, so when you put them back on there, uh, you don't probably uh, have to uh, rinse them down too hard. But I'm going to clean that throttle body and then put a new gasket in there as well. There's two on, two more on the bottom. All right, so four of these long bolts go into the throttle body, and they all have washers, so don't lose the washers. And so the throttle body should, there it is, come off like that. There's that gasket inside that I'll be changing, and I'm gonna probably clean inside the throttle body. So now that the throttle body is disconnected from the air intake, I uh, clean it up and put a new gasket on there. They're probably like 12, 15 bucks rock auto. So spend the extra cash just to replace that. And so, and that'll keep you from having to slide it. And that way you can put your um, gasket on the bottom of the air plenum lot easier with this throttle body being disconnected. I didn't disconnect it from the harness there, but uh, I'm gonna clean it up and put a new gasket on it. And I left those uh, coolant lines still connected. So I got the new throttle body gasket. Just gotta fit it in around. So my next move is going to be to disconnect here and I'll use blue tape to signify which, which hoses I've uh, taken off. And you see where I originally mapped out how I was gonna go there about that, but I'm gonna just disconnect here and it's clip right here to get this line out of the way. All right, so I got that Jose labeled to where A goes. So I'm gonna take the clamp off there. And then you just kind of pry on the side of this one. Use it like a get in between and then it'll just clip up like that. So once you get this clip off here from the side and this hose from here marked A, you can kind of take it out of this holster. 
Move it over to the side, out of the way. Next, I'll use my tape and I'm going to disconnect this one, this one, and this one. And I'll label them C1, C2, C3 with my blue tape. All right, so I'm going to take out this hose, out this little clip here. Take that hose out of there. We'll label this one clip 4C4, and this is a 10 millimeter bolt right here. I'm gonna leave these lines connected here. Take this clip, take this 10 millimeter bolt off, and just then start working on the back. That clip just comes off of that hose, just comes off like that. Ten millimeter bolt. Just unloosen that and move it out of the way. So take that ten millimeter bolt loose. So labeled as B. I uh, disconnected that uh, line right there and uh, just used some WD-40 and just kind of used a blunted end like a like a popsicle stick and just kind of whittled it and pushed it off and came off pretty easy. So didn't have to tug on it, but just use the end to pull that up there. And then you'll need to get to uh, this clip on that hose on the upper air intake, then one to the PCV valve down, uh, down that way. So whatever clip you can grab a hold of, and then there's one more that we're gonna have to reach around, give it a reach around, and uh, go blindly to get like a 13 millimeter that's holding that uh, that hose down there. So three things to take off back there. So in the back of the air intake, uh, move that clip back. And get your blunted tool. So I sprayed some WD-40 and you just kind of got to get your arm back there and just kind of wiggle it. Wiggle that tube and this top one, this is the one that goes by the firewall. So that one's disconnected. And then you got the PVC, PCV valve that's connected by this hose underneath it right here. So I'll probably get to that clip or there's another one down at the bottom. So you can grab that clip with a pair of needle nose, get your arm around there and just slide it from the top. So I currently got that 13 millimeter with my fingers. Oh man, it's a tight one. So you gotta kinda wrap your meat hooks around this baby and break it at least with a small ratchet. And then, ooh, there it is. That's the dreaded 13 millimeter that holds the, the, uh, that silver hose down there to the upper air intake. And I got it. And now it's time to take off the air intake and hopefully put some spark plugs in.
All right, next, uh, they want you to take it off in a certain sequence. So number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. And then when you put it back together, they, it goes in the opposite sequence. So I'll take the tape off once I've got it off and taken off the plenum gasket, put a new gasket and put it on. So that's the sequence they want you to remove that upper air intake. Okay, the moment of truth. I got uh, all six of the uh, upper air intake uh, bolts off and I took them off in the order that they wanted them. Uh, they'll be torqued back in a different sequence than what you took them off. So let me see if this thing will come off here. I forgot to remove my clips here. So it looks like I uh, removed all three of my clips and I need to take this one off of that bracket there. Take that clip off. Okay, to get this clip off, I basically just used a hot knife and cut underneath it. Finally come through, so I don't know how the heck that sucker was on there. But uh, you can always zip tie it when you put everything back. Okay, now I got my clips off. One, two, three. And I cut that harness right here. So just cut underneath it because it's just plastic and just hold it right there. But you can zip tie it when you come back. All right. Let's pull this pl plenum off and see about changing some spark plugs. Here we go. And there it is. to those three coils back there and here's those infamous tubes right here there's the pc PV, pcv valve there's the bracket that was holding up to the uh to the back of the air intake and so PV, pcv valve and this is the one that's back up that runs up against the firewall i think it's the brake booster and so there we go there's uh i guess i need to cover that air and take out but i guess i'll uh maybe wipe it down clean it off pretty good and then put some papers over it so stuff won't fall into it so so the next move and you don't have to do this uh, since, but since i'm back here and since it was a pain in the ass to get back here um you get, i'm gonna change this p c v valve and the hose that goes along with it because that's about the only hose that I could find. So anyhow, uh, and then I'm going to change the spark plugs. You'll need to slide this clip out of the bracket. You push that down and pull towards the passenger side. That way you can have some slack to take off this middle, uh, this middle plug connector here. Otherwise, it's a little too tight with the wiring. So, so anyway, that, there's a clip right there and it just slides. But you may have to push this thing to get it to go off. Okay, so I ordered a new PCV valve and like I say, once you've gotten everything taken off, you might as well change that and the hose. Uh, so I got a new hose, so I'm gonna transfer the clamps to the new hose and put the new PVC, but basically it's not in there very tight. You can just use a wrench to get around it, spin it off. So 
and when you put it back in you don't have to put it in super tight either it's plastic threads so be careful just take it in finger tight and then with your wrench maybe in about a quarter turn of course I bought a new uh, PVC hose and it's the one that's going to hook over towards this way so you'll kind of want it in that direction and also put your clamps to where you can access them at a future date if you ever plan on doing that again hopefully not on this car with me and just like the ones on the front you take the 10 millimeter out remove the clip wiggle them pull them out put your new ignition coils on and start putting everything back together so in the back there you can kind of get your arm and snake it around the biggest one you're gonna have is that 13 millimeter that goes right into here then you got your PVC hose right here it goes up to a 90 and then your brake booster probably the easier one to get but make your clips accessible so you can grip them and move them so and then start putting them back together. We'll bust it off here in a little bit. Oh, we gotta put the air intake back on. So here's the underside of the uh, air, upper air intake. And so, um, you know, the PVC hose will hook here. That brake booster will hook here. And then, um, when you're looking at the throttle body earlier, it looks like you would might need to take this off, but it all comes off in one together. So, so you don't have to take that off. You can leave that on. And so, uh, we'll probably uh, pull this gasket out and clean this up. And the tabs will just line up here, here. So after you've cleaned and took out the old gasket, you kind of stuff this in. It has the couple of tabs right here and it should fit snugly in there so it shouldn't fall out when you turn it over turn it over to put it in but you still want it in there pretty good where it won't be moving so just get it in them grooves pretty good so you do save a lot of time by not having to unhook all these hoses here just the bare minimum of what you need to unhook and so when you look at it that way, it doesn't seem so hard. So now I'm gonna take these uh, removal numbers off and uh, we'll put the uh, tightening down torque um, that you need to put or that they want you to do the sequence. So I'll change the sequence here. So after you've installed your gasket on the under, other side of the air plenum, uh, it's reverse. So you'll tighten six, five, four, three, two, one. And then you'll torque them down to about eight pounds. So it's not very, very hard to um, snug them down. But uh, six, five, four, three, two, one. But you can all, always hand tighten them until you're ready to torque them down.
So I just got the uh, air intake bolts uh, just snugged in and I'll torque them here in the reverse pattern. But I was gonna show you that I've hooked the PVC hose up and then the brake booster goes on the top. The uh, PVC hose, you need to get the clip on first before you put the other hose on. Just grab the hose from the back. Slide it on. Okay, the moment of the truth. I might prom it up a couple of times, so I'll hit the button, but it won't start it just yet. All right, here we go, probably a rough start.